I've been crucified with Christ I've been crucified with Christ I no longer live but Christ lives in me We're continuing my study on the apostolic doctrine of eschatology a lot of people don't understand what the word eschatology means. They're not familiar with it. But it's a word that is used in many places in the New Testament, many scriptures. The word last. The word last is the Greek word eschatos. It's in the Greek language and it means ends of, last, or latter end. The suffix ology means the study of. Therefore, eschatology is the study of the last things. The last things of the Old Testament. Eschatology concerns the uh, prophecies that were to be fulfilled in the last days of God's Old Testament relationship with the nation of Israel. These prophecies concern the resurrection of the last day, the return of Jesus, and the time of judgment. Remember, when you read about these things, you are reading about the events getting ready to take place in the lives of first century people. The expression, audience relevance, conveys the who, what, when, where, and why the scriptures were written. The Bible contains everything written about God's people and to God's people. It begins with God choosing a people to covenant with. And through laws and ordinances, they were given a covenant connection. When they obeyed God's laws, things went well with them. But when they disobeyed God's laws, the judgment of God came upon them. The Bible is the unfolding story of the end of God's covenant relationship with the nation of Israel. In Genesis 48 and verse 21, on his deathbed, Jacob gathered his twelve sons around them and said in Genesis 49 verse 1, And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. He told them of their last days. In Deuteronomy 31, verse 29, For I know that after my death you will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days, because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Moses told the Israelites what was going to happen to them in the latter days. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 49 to 53, The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he hath destroyed thee. He shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fence walls come down, wherein thou trustest throughout all thy land, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which thy Lord God hath given thee, in the siege and in the straightness wherein thy enemies shall distress thee. Moses spoke of the armies of Rome encompassing the city of Jerusalem in A.D. 66 to A.D. 70. It was the last days. They would become the abomination of desolation against Jerusalem. They would be the great tribulation that Jesus spoke of in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 15 and verse 21. Their latter end. In Deuteronomy 32 and 29. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. This occurred in the year A.D. 70. Many church people today talk about the last days or the end times, but they do not understand why they were and when they were. 
There are no last days today, nor ever shall be. Those days happened almost 2,000 years ago. Eight times the phrase last days is used throughout the scripture. They are all relative to Israel's last days. It was almost 2,000 years ago. And on that day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, verse 14, 16, and 17, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. The Apostle Peter said, This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel 700 years before. It was the last day. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 2, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. The scripture said that Jesus spoke in the last days. He was there. He was alive. It was the last days. In Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 26, he appeared in the end of the age. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. In the year A.D. 30, from A.D. 30 to A.D. 70, it was a period of 40 years. Those were the last days, the last generation of the old covenant that God had with Israel. It was that period of transition between covenants when Israel of God, the Israel of God was redefined from a natural people to a spiritual people, from a natural physical building to a spiritual house, from animal sacrifices to spiritual sacrifices, from laws written in books to laws written in human hearts. In the New Covenant, we find that the New Covenant is everlasting. The Bible says that absolutely nothing about the end of time. In Isaiah chapter 53, 55 and verse 3, Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. And in Isaiah 65 and verse 17, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. In Isaiah 61 and verse 8, For I the Lord love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 39 and verse 40, And I will give them one heart and one way, that they may fear me forever, for the good of them and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them, that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts, that they shall not depart from me. The Bible talks about an everlasting covenant, one that will never end. And in Jeremiah it spoke about in that day there would be one way, one heart, there are a lot of ways that men are preaching about today, but there's only one get way with God. That's the right way. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the scripture said that's the way of death. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. And it is an everlasting covenant that we see being mentioned here. In Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 26, Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. <clears throat> It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. In other words, what it's saying is that the body of Christ, the church, is going to be in this world forever. It's not going to go anywhere. 
there is not going to be an end of time. The body of Christ, those that are spiritually born into it, will always be here forever. I ask a lot of apostolic people the question, are you born again? Are you in the kingdom of God? And then they stop and scratch their head and wonder, I think I am. Well, if you've been born again, you are born again into the kingdom of God. It's here. It's going to be in this world as an everlasting kingdom. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. The blood of Jesus that he shed on Calvary was the blood that was going to endure forever. It was going to support the everlasting covenant that God has made with his people. The apostles asked Jesus, When shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the age, or the old covenant world? Jesus said to them in Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 through 7, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, Stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 34, Jesus here very plainly and very clearly tells his disciples that all of the things that we just read all the things he had just mentioned in Matthew chapter 24 were going to come to pass in their generation. This includes the gospel being preached in all the world, the abomination of desolation, the great tribulation, and the second coming of Christ. This is so clear. Jesus did keep his promise to come within that last first century generation. His coming occurred spiritually the way that he intended. Sin has been atoned for forever. Now all Christians throughout all generations can live in God's spiritual kingdom here on earth and at physical death go to heaven without ever being separated from God again. The truth about eschatology matters. It does affect your world view. We are not living in the last days. We live in the kingdom of God, a kingdom that has no end. It is an eternal kingdom. When we read and study the Bible, we must always keep in mind 
the hermeneutical principle of audience relevance, which seeks to discover what the original audience understood a passage to mean. The Bible was written for us, but it was not written to us. As you read these scriptures, ask yourself this question. Who is this written to? When was it written? When did they expect Jesus to return? I've been crucified with Christ. I've been crucified.